Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It does look absolutely fantastic. Um, we're not quite sure if it's going to be free to play yet, or if it's going to be uh, in a purchase at 29.99 to 39.99, and then check out 10,000 expansion packs like World of Warcraft. <laughs> We can only yeah. find out. So <laughs> let's go see what Jimmy has to say about. Yeah, well, um, what's the game? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean keeping too much on BlizzCon, but then um, just suddenly out of nowhere, there's this great big announcement. Everyone was talking about it on Facebook, on social media, just everywhere, really. Uh, also about the new game Overwatch, and I've got to say, I am pleasantly surprised by what they've shown off. Um, <laughs> I think it's in, uh, it, to be honest, the thing that took me more by surprise was the fact that Blizzard obviously come out with uh, a first-person multiplayer shooter, which, aside from the multiplayer multi uh, multiplayer side, they haven't really done anything like this before. So, you know, no, it's interesting to see them, see them branch out, uh, and also to see something that looks stylistically different as well. It looks more like a Pixar kind of style than uh, the whole kind of hand-painted fantasy World of Warcraft. Uh, and StarCraft side that we've seen for a while. Um, I I did I did find it like that. I, it's been 17 years since uh, was it 17 years since Blizzard did a, a new IP. Uh, I think it was 17 years or well, near enough that long. And I blinking long time. I tell you now. <laughs> I, I found I felt the uh, the actual gameplay felt a bit like a um, Team Fortress. Yeah, I think that's that's the thing. That's the easy, if I was to describe it to anyone, in fact, they had no idea what it was, I'd probably just say to them, kind of, uh, Team Fortress style gameplay, just mixed in with a host of kind of wacky characters. And, mm, uh, definitely. I think the thing that's mo that I find most interesting about it, because as someone, I, I'm someone that enjoys multiplayer games, but I'm not one of those people who jumps in on the bandwagon of every single multiplayer game out there. For me, I like playing a multiplayer game that at least offers something a bit different. Um, and the thing that interests me is the fact that it's, it works more like in well, it looks to work more like an asymmetrical style multiplayer game where obviously you've got these individual characters that all have their own abilities, all have their own weapons, and they're all completely different mm -hmm. from one another. And it's how so you work together and work against them or whatever. So that's the side that interests me the most. Um, from looking at the trailer where they introduced all the different characters, or at least the characters they've shown up until now, um, it looks to be very interesting. Each character at least. Not only looked completely different, a different style, but also seemed to play a lot differently. So I'm I'm really excited to try it out. I, I want to try and get onto the alpha or beta, whatever is coming in 2015, just test it out. I, 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 for me, it uh, it did actually feel like um, they they were taking the MMO classes and chucking them into um, a team-based FPS. You know, you got the tank, you got the healer, you got the range, and you have the melee, and a, yeah. you know, there's probably a mage in it somewhere along the line. They, they're trying to implement the, all the classes that you would see in the classic sort of MMO genre game, and then chuck them into this foray and see what happens. If it will work or not is a different matter. You know, I, I don't know how they're going to implement these sort of classes, and they, you know, I don't think I see five healers within yeah. one whole match. It's be unfair. So, how are they going to do it? How are they going to uh, set their matches up? Have you got to bring your five mates in all the time to go in and play like you would do like a, a raid dungeon in World of Warcraft or any sort of MMO? Yeah. How's that going to work? Um, yeah, that, that's one thing I was thinking of. Um, from I'm not sure if it was just from the way the trailer was made, but the impression I got was that you couldn't have multiple multiple versions of the same character. Like you'd only have one on each team, for example. So you couldn't have five of the healer character. You could only have mm. one same one across the board of all the others. That's the way I saw it, which you know I think would make things more interesting. Um, to have all these different characters in play at all times and not kind of bulking up. Like for example games like Battlefield where, you know, you might have about ten uh, <laughs> about yeah, about twenty snipers, <laughs> ten of the assault class and about Four with the uh, tacticians or whatever they call, who can heal. Yeah, I think if you have one of each, it would make it a bit more interesting. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I like I like the fact that each character is different, and the fact that it's Blizzard. I know a very talented bunch. And... That is, that's a good idea. They got it, you know, all different. Uh, the only thing they got, like I said, uh, is that if you go into, you know, for me, I was playing World of Warcraft for many years. I started when it became vanilla. Back yeah. In, 2000 or something, and uh, I played right through. And what I noticed was you you had not many tanks because it was a boring class. 
Um, he didn't have many healers because it was like really hard to level up as a healer. And that was basically it. Then he had, of course, he had paladins, and you had the mages, and the warlocks, and the rogues, and the hunters. They were all popular classes. Do you think it's going to happen in this one? Do you think we're going to see more people taking up the opportunity to play the hunter class or the uh, mage class and less of the tank class and less of the healing classes, meaning people are going to have to wait around for those groups again to you know, get into it? And if think we yeah, end up with yeah, well, queues. It, it's, it's all, all down to the design at the end of the day. Um, it's, it is incredibly difficult to make sure that there's appeal for every single character, especially if every single character is different, offers this new kind of set of abilities. I think Blizzard most certainly can make it appeal, but you've, you've just got to make sure that each class is fun to play with, fun, and it offers a different play style to accommodate for different, pe different people's needs and different people's. To just you know, for it for it to be fun, you know, you, every every class has to be fun to play with. Every class has to offer something new. And as long as all the classes offer that, which they look to, um, then they sh we should be, you know, should be, should be good and should run smoothly. But you know, um, we, we won't know until obviously ev the public play test where we can that see if there are true. any ignored classes. Because I think every multiplayer game, um, well, at least most, oh, it seems to have. There's always like one or two characters or one or two races or classes or whatever that just most people don't really deal with too much. I think Team Fortress 2 does it the best I've ever seen in regards to each character has its own purpose, its own needs, and mm. you know each one plays differently and they are all fun to play. Even even the medic, you know, originally I think in like vanilla Team Fortress um, before the Mahusiv and uh, much needed updates, he he was literally just he, he was if you wanted to heal you'd play as him, but they've made him a lot more offensive now. So it's finding that nice balance between. Uh, between the the playstyle that he's designed that he's designed for, mm -hmm. and also being fun for that particular uh, user that's is playing as him. So, but you know, with 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 all their work in World of Warcraft, I I, I can see them pulling it off with great success. Um, oh, my only concern, that. yeah, my only concern is what you said before, where we're we're, we're not sure if it's going to be a free to play title yet. Uh, personally, I can see it as being a free to play title. It certainly looks like it has. It the, does look that way. It looks like it's got the kind of the uh, the framework to work with that, and also obviously with with Blizzard's history of World of Warcraft and all their microtransactions they've put in and things like that. I I can see them building something like that into it. I just hope that it's not. I doubt it will be, but pay I just to win. Not, yeah, I hope it's not got pay to win because oh, yeah. for me that that kills it with me. I've been free to play games. I do try them, but most of the time, most of the ones I have tried out in the past just end with free to play or well, free to win, where if you're I mean, Pay to win, where you literally, if you pay for it, if you pay for certain things, then you're gonna you're gonna beat everyone. While if you're trying to stick to the free path and grind away, it takes time, and all that yeah. time really equates to nothing or a lesser reward, and it just becomes pretty much a pain in the ass to play and stick and with people. Yeah, totally do that. Yeah, totally I've, I've, I've I've never stuck with a free to play, uh, but I hope oh. this one breaks the mold. I hope this breaks the mold and gives me a reason to keep going back to it, or even gives me a reason to actually want to pay for it. Um, Tell you from, what you should try. Try Hearthstone. Uh, Hearthstone from Blizzard is supposed to be pretty good. Yeah, I've, I've, I know a lot of lot of friends that, that play that game to death, and to be honest, um, it looks like something I'd probably enjoy. I've just yet to try it, really. Um, it looks like the kind of thing where if I do enjoy it, it will, it will eat my soul and my time and my money. So at the moment, I'm trying to stay away <laughs> from it, but... Uh, you know, it, it looks interesting. And again, if they've done that right, if they've done that right um, with that game, then I don't see why Blizzard won't be able to do it right with Overwatch. Yep, very true, very true. Okay, let's uh, thank you for that, Jimmy. Um, no worries. Basically, we're waiting for, like I said, waiting for Overwatch to come out, and um, we're praying and hoping that Blizzard and Tim do it right and don't milk us for every ounce of our cent of money we earn during our wages. <laughs> And recently, we don't really get paid that much, neither, so they better not. <laughs> Especially our students, where we go out and we drink, have sex, and drink some more eat some <laughs> junk food, and we come home absolutely skint and complain we have no money. 100% true. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next subject. The next subject is going to be uh, game development times, and of course, um, the the dreaded DLC. We all had DLC, but game development times. Oh, 
recently, we have seen many games get released and they have been poor, to say the least, poor in uh, the uh, in the event the game has not been finished, the multiplayer hasn't been tested fully, it needs to be patched on release, even up to 10 gigabyte on some patches, which is ridiculous for yes. a game that's only just recently come out. And then, you, then of course, you've got the games that don't feel finished, it's lacking content. Yep. Uh, the biggest ones would have to be um, Drive Club. On, yeah. uh, so uh, I'm definitely going to touch on that since I reviewed it for Envision. So I've got something to say on that matter. <laughs> yeah, it was released and it took them months. I believe even now it's not completely fixed. It's still screwing up everyone's lovely game time. Well, thank you very much, Sony. I'm paying a lot of money for this piece of shit. We yeah. love you. <laughs> and then, of course, you have the recent release Destiny. Now there was uh, a number of reviews going out there. Some people giving it high scores, some people giving it low scores, but most of it was down to it felt empty. The world felt empty, the story was lacking, and what is the blinking point in making a game and you gotta go out there onto the world wide web to understand what the fuck is going on. Mm -hmm. What happened to putting that content in a bloody game? Yeah, I did that so fucking lazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's actually, actually one thing um, in regards to Destiny. Um, there was a there was a uh, forum thread that was that was going around doing the rounds and got picked up by uh, websites like IGN and things, where um, some guy that joined in on Destiny playtesting a year before, about I think it was around a year before the release, um, who was under an NDA. Um, was told to test, I think he said probably about 50% of the story mode, just play through it, write down his thoughts. And what he had said is that the story at the time when he was playing it was completely different. Like literally uh, elements of the current game story was in there, but it was a lot more fleshed out and made a lot more sense. Uh, now if anyone can remember, um, uh, before Destiny actually released, uh, it was the, the, the lead writer, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but uh, he actually he, he left the project. Hmm. Um, so what people are speculating is that when he left the project, he, you know, he might have taken the story with him, um, which obviously left the, the, the developers with these things they built for the story, like the environments, the characters, but they couldn't actually use any of the original story that was written, that was penned, and it was actually apparently pretty good, according to this guy that wrote this uh, forum thread and explained it. Um, Oh, I think I found so, it. Yeah, which which is why which is why this story in the game just seems really really weak and not fleshed out, and there's loads of things that doesn't make sense. Like there's a there's a character. Um, I think just think literally refer to her as the stranger who appears two or three times, helps the player out. It's never explained why she's helping the player out. Never explained who she is or her purpose in the game. She just turned up a couple of times to say it helps the player, and then crops up at the end once you've defeated the threat gives you a rifle and then leaves and it's not explained it just feels really random it doesn't doesn't gel with what's actually happening and again it kind of further reinforces this idea and this this theory that the, the story was completely changed um makes I, I didn't, no sense yeah it doesn't make too it makes no sense and you know i think from i did briefly go over the thread and obviously no one knows for sure if this is true, but I'd say from my personal experience of the game and seeing the, the narrative as being severely under, underwhelming, I, I I believe it to be true because there's a lot of things that are so out of, uh, out of, out, just so far away from what Bungie have created with Halo. Uh, you know, they kind of, the, they've got quite a layered story going on there and a lot of kind of history mm -hmm. and characters coming in and for then Destiny to come out and the, the story just not be at all like the way they'd built the story for Halo, it just seems incredibly odd. Um, what, but what about if they um, what if they either cherry picked it? Um, they basically produced a whole game and then they cherry picked out, well, we'll have that bit, we'll have that bit, we'll have that bit, and we'll call that DLC 1, DLC 2, DLC 3, DLC 4, compile it all together, and this is what you're going to get. Do you think that's happened to the game? Yeah, yeah I'd say so, because like um, looking at what the DLCs uh, DLC are off, is offering, um, obviously I know that was kind of a glitch people found in the game where you could actually see all the markers on the map of where the DLC bits would be placed. Um, the, the, there was a lot of like strike missions which are the 
non-story based, just kind of co-op missions where you blast through all the enemies and get to the end, defeat a boss, get some XP and uh, weapons, etc. But then there was also a wealth of story content that kind of continued on the arc. Um, now, for what I can gather, it's kind of a separate, its own separate story, but it does carry on with the characters and kind of carries on from where it left off. Um, but yeah, it, the playing through the the, the campaign uh, or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't actually take very long because it doesn't take very long to actually level up. Um, it doesn't. It, it you know you get through it you you get through it and then say you have to level up to a certain level to get to it. That's really easy. You complete that, and before you know, a couple of hours down the line, you actually complete the story mode. And it does feel kind of lacking because it's so easy to get to the to the level twenty, which is kind of the the, the level cap, even though you can go a bit higher. Um, it, yeah, it's just, it just seems far too easy. And it would it 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 kind of feels like we have cut out content mm -hmm. from it because of how easy it is to complete and get to the cap. Um, and as I say, it does carry on. It's its own kind of separate story in a way, but it does carry on. So it, it does. I, I do get the feeling from what I've read about it that it does seem as though it probably might have been cut. That's from bad. Of That's really bad of developers. Dude, it, it should not do that. I don't yeah. do that. If it's going to be, if, if they're going to make this sort of game, and if it looks like an MMO, it feels like an MMO, they really need to flush it out. Uh, with any sort of MMO, uh, it's, it's story driven, as you probably yeah. know. You know, you got Rift, you got Star Wars, and Guild Wars One and Two, and World of Warcraft, and, you know, many more, and they're all story driven. Uh, I know Activision and Bungie have tried to kept try to keep away from calling it an MMO but yeah. for me when I'm when I'm looking at the actual game when I see the end game content it does think okay the 1 to 20 or 24 whatever it is and okay we're going to raids or yeah we've got to get a group together and do raids that, that feels too much like a, like an MMO to me or anything else so just stuck to that yeah, like, I think, I content think... it would be a better game yeah, I think the 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 way they defined it, uh, Bunch themselves was a shared world shooter, uh, which to me is just another way of saying MMO. Uh, yes, with MMO <laughs> bits in it, um, and playing it, you know, it does stylize itself quite as an R this RPG MMO FPS hybrid, and it does take a lot of the the conventions and expectations of an MMO. MMO and incorporate them in. So I think it's fairly. I think I think it's all right to kind of compare it to the M an MMO experience and mark it down accordingly. I was quite critical in my review for Envision of Destiny because it stylizes itself as this MMO. It builds it around all these RPG and MMO mechanics and conventions, but it just doesn't live at, uh, deliver on the on the on the things that really on the content. The, yeah, that mm. that moves the game on, like lore. Like the, like, the, like the the world law, like the story, like the enemies and stuff. There just wasn't a lot in there that made the world interesting to to be in uh, or to explore. Now, obviously, there were these grimoire cards. Uh, if I'm right, that's what they were called. But uh, as you did certain things or completed certain missions, you'd unlock these cards. You'd log in online with your account, link it to your destiny uh, character. And then you'd have all these grimoire cards that you'd unlocked, and that would then reveal all the lore and history and everything. But <laughs> um, I just thought that was an absolute shambles way of doing it, more than anything. Because it, as far as I'm concerned, if you're trying to give the character important, well, if you're trying to give the player important information about the game uh, that gives the gives the story context and mean, means that you actually understand what's going on, it should mm -hmm. be in the damn game. It shouldn't it should be, be anywhere in else. AI. In game I'm, I'm fine with about. I'm fine with like additional stuff like for example World of Warcraft and on their website uh, I mean having stories about the world and things like that and all different books and characters and things being scattered around because it's mm -hmm. even though it is associated with the game, it's not a massive part of the game. Well, I think with, narrative. with World of Warcraft though. I think with World of Warcraft, it's not just um, yeah, there are books out there, but it's all back story history about the characters. Like um, yeah. if you haven't played Warcraft Three, for example, yeah, yeah, Warcraft Three, you, you, you probably learn about uh, Illidan and um, the Lich King and everything else. Go yeah, the Lich King, those sort of things. So with World of Warcraft, the game 
all the content for the game is in the game through the story elements stuff on level one and you listen to everything yeah. and talk to them and all the movies and then of course you've got if you want to find out more about individual characters then of course you can go out online and check out or let's look at uh, Luther, or see what he's all about, or the Lich King, see what happened to him to, before him to become the way he is. And, uh, I think that's yeah. that's what Blizzard have done right. Yeah, as, as you said, um, see, you, you've got all the main story in World of Warcraft, in the context of World of Warcraft, you've got all the main information in the game there for you to read and interact with, while all the additional stuff is elsewhere. While in the yeah. case of Destiny, the main information is elsewhere. And there's not much that really explains the stuff that's actually happening, and it's quite ridiculous, really. Like, you, you'll be fighting enemies, and you're like, what's this enemy? What's this doing? I was just baffled by what was going on. You had to go online to learn about the enemies. You had to really go online to understand what was happening, because there, was, there were, there were, there were cutscenes occasionally uh, throughout. But I, I honestly, when playing the narrative, I, I honestly was struggling to even understand what was happening. And in some cases, completely baffled. I had to read online to actually see why I was doing certain things. Um, so yeah, just stuff like that, and then obviously then getting the feeling that they have cut out some elements of the story to use well as well. Done. Well done, Activision. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just blame Activision. Your fault. I've actually, uh, <laughs> I've actually got something quite hefty, if you want me, um, in regards to DLC, if you don't mind listening to me for a minute or two. Yeah, go on. Um, just in regards to DLC and, and its existence, I don't have a problem with it, you know. Um, personally, I've only ever bought uh, a couple of elements to DLC. One was The Last of Us, and one was the Bioshock Infinite Burial at Sea, mainly mm. because they were good they content. Were hefty, they were, it was hefty. It was good content. It was pretty well priced for what it was, yep. and it was just additional stuff that was good value for the money you're paying for. Now, the problem I do have with DLC is is its practice in the industry and how it's now started to become like standard procedure with gamers uh, picking up their favorite game franchises, all brand new games, and just expecting DLC to exist. And that, that because yep. of that, and because of their expectations, it's now started to become the norm. Mainstream. Yeah, it's now it's now the norm, and it's now mainstream across all different games. And uh, I'm kind of I'm I've, I'm looking at it from both sides of the, of the coin. I'm looking at it from the business side and from the gamer side. And from the business side. I get it. It makes complete sense. It's perfect sense. You know, they're getting, they're making huge profits off consumers. They're not only paying for the game, then they're also paying a bit extra for extra content. So, say if you had, I don't know, a million people have bought this game, and only about 50% actually buy the DLC, and the DLC is say about 15 pounds or something like that. You know, the the figures there are huge. This extra content, they make a lot of extra money from it. So yeah, I understand, I understand it from that standpoint. And also, one of the other totally. key reasons why DLC exists is because it keeps players active in their product. Um, mm -hmm. in, a, in an age now where game development is absolutely is absolutely huge um, all over the world now, uh, you know, you've got more companies are appearing, and because there's more companies, there's now more games. And as more games have now started to appear, there's also uh, more competition on the market. So while back in the day, um, in, in the 90s, you might have had like Unreal Tournament and Quake, or like the big FPSs. You look at these. They, they awesome. put, um, yeah, you, you look at it oh. these days, and you've got Call of Duty, you've got Battlefield, and then you've got loads of other FPSs, even like Titanfall thrown in there as well. And because there's so many games coming out, there's so much competition, and companies feel the need to keep their consumers. Uh, with, with their games and make them play it for as long as possible. Make sure they don't switch, uh, well, jump ship to anything else. Um, so obviously, having these this continued development and all this additional content coming out, obviously, it kind of helps them, also kind of cements them with that product for X amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, obviously, in in the industry, yeah, um, in in the industry, uh, in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, you know, the, the the games industry as a whole was was a niche. Uh, there wasn't different. that many people. There wasn't that many people involved in it. Um, and these days, you look at it, and because the industry is so huge, uh, the industry has actually gone from being all about the gamer and for the gamer, but more so for the men in suits. You know, the business people, people running the company, the publishers. Uh, it's really, genuinely, honestly, all about all about the money yes. these days. Um, you know, back in the day, as I said before, with it being a niche. Um, consoles and games 
uh, cost cost a lot to not only produce but also buy. And as such, the companies uh, respected their consumers for you know taking them on board and supporting their products. Um, and you know they they tried to cram in as much game as possible to make the customers happy because then they they'd spent lots of money at the time for yep. this and they wanted to give them a, a damn good time for their money. Um, obviously, they had things like expansion packs that would come out, which is effectively the DLC's forefather in a way. And um, you know they were released six months, like a year down the line, maybe even two years, okay. depending on what the game was. And, I don't remember um, any expansion packs. No, there was, all, there was all kind of expansion packs for uh, things. Obviously, there was with Warcraft 3 for one. There was uh, Reign of Chaos was the original release. Oh yeah, for PC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for uh, more so more so on the PC side when PC was the the king at the time. Um, Still is. You know, yeah. You, Good yeah. <laughs> you, you obviously had these massive expansion packs that yeah, were a, a huge up to the, update to the game. Lots of content, you know, new mechanics, new worlds, new characters, new story arcs. Uh, you know, it was all happy days. It was great. People would pick these up, um, and you know, it'd be like a whole entire game, like a whole new sequel, effectively, to the game mm-hmm. that we bought previously. Mm-hmm. Now these days, DLC just feels like episodic expansion packs with reduced content and it's just smattered amongst a year long window where they just get slotted in wherever and because the kind of downsized and um, there's really not a lot in them there's just little content for these extortionate prices they're still trying to charge these these expansion pack prices and while expansion packs back in the day was effectively a whole new game these days season passes and and uh, DLC packs were just little chunks are, here, no? yeah just a few bits of chunks of gameplay it's nothing particularly yeah. new it's just extra kind of maps and content it's not not like a whole new experience um you know most of the times we've just said before it kind of feels like a lot of content is purposely cut from the full game to act as the mm-hmm. future because it's so cemented in gaming culture and the industry these days people in companies well more so probably more so the publishers feel as though they have to follow suit and feel as though they have to include this DLC because it gets some extra money and oh, yeah, totally. the game is playing for much longer um and you know, the, the, I can't. I honestly can't think of many major releases anymore that are 100% for the gamer. The ones that include the full experience straight off the bat. Which are? Um, well, yeah. Well, actually, yeah. Because when they um, <laughs> can't they releasing loads of free content and things for? Yeah, Witcher Three. Uh, Witcher Three is coming out next year, as everyone knows. Hopefully, you know anyway if you follow it. And that's come with 16 free. DLCs free. What is this? What is uh, this? What we live in free? <laughs> it's 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 alien to think of free <laughs> actually being a thing anymore. You know, <laughs> you'd expect to be charged a lot for yeah this extra content. You know that that's the only that's the, you mentioned that's the only one I can actually think of that is 100% for the gamer and just provides them with all the additional content either free of charge or just all the content straight off the bat in the one game and that's it. You're done. Um, DLC pass season passes these days are just kind of if there's if there's a multiplayer component these days it's got a season pass attached to it somewhere. Yep. Um, like Call of Duty Advanced Warfare obviously recently came out. Um, I looked at the season passes out of curiosity and they are trying to charge thirty five pounds, thirty five British pounds of hard, hard, you know, hard working money. I have not seen that and that is taking the piss. It is. It, it's it's the most extortionate thing. I've ever seen, and as, I don't think they've even officially announced what's in the season pass yet. People are just speculating. Are they offering but, anything in it? Is it um, says nothing at all on a page. What's uh, what you get in it? Yeah, they, they haven't they haven't honestly said what's going to be in it. I assume if it's going to be in the past releases, three or four map packs, maybe with the odd extra game mode. But even then, say I think the the standard for Call of Duty map packs uh, over the past years, I swear it was in like four extra maps and maybe the odd one game mode. And even then, the charging individually, about £15 for four maps. That's £15. That's almost half the cost. That's half or a third of the cost of the overall game, and you're paying for four maps. Just four levels to play in, and things like that I just find totally totally ridiculous. Oh, just ludicrous to everything that you know, everyone would ever spend £15, which is to say about a third or half of the cost of the game on just a small chunk of extra content. You know, whatever happens, what <laughs> whatever happened to these full games, you know, the, the problem at the end of the day with DLC 
is with the games industry growth spur and becoming more popular and feeling the need to do this with comp uh, to fight against competition, and also just general attitude changes in you know being less about the gamer and benefiting the game, all about benefiting benefiting the company, the men in suits, getting them plenty of money, rolling in all this profit because it is such a big industry now. It's one of the leading forms of entertainment up there with film. So you know these days the money really does uh, just overwhelm mm -hmm. the product. Of course, the the day. this is even worse. I've just gone to the actual page itself. Uh, this is what made me laugh most. Season pass and DLC content may not be available on all platforms in all territories. Pricing and release dates may also vary based on the platform. Now, I, I, I honestly, I come to this page now on Steam and I'm thinking, okay, if I'm going to buy the season pass for thirty four ninety nine, I want to know what I'm getting. And it yeah. says, like Jimmy said, there's nothing on it. It just says. DLC content in season pass may be sold separately. Content available in 2015 following the game's launch on the 11th of 4th, 2014. If you purchase the season pass or the collector's edition with the season pass, um, they do not. They they do not also purchase standalone map packs. So basically, if you, the basic thing: if you get a season pass, you don't have to get these standalone map packs. So in general terms, this 34.99 is getting you a couple of maps. Yeah, big fucking probably about one. maybe about ten maps in guns. total, extra maybe, <laughs> maybe an odd an odd weapon, maybe an odd game mode along the line. There are rumours yeah. that zombies is meant to be returning or something in this one as part of DLC. That's actually free of charge, is it? Ah, uh, free DLC is for everyone. Yeah, yeah. That'd be interesting then. Which is uh, that's good. I don't maybe. mind because zombies always been free. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, they've always, yeah, even if it's just the one level, you would still have something to play it. But you know, I just, no, I just, I just can't agree with something that not only has all this extra content that really could have been in the in the game, especially when there's day like day one DLC that comes out. Oh, on launch day, there's an extra DLC that's out. Put it in the fucking game. If if you're releasing exactly on, yeah. on the same day as the release date, why couldn't it have been in the game to begin with? I just find something like that ridiculous, but it's more so just the extortion of prices. As I say, I'm not against DLC, but I only ever buy it if I deem it good value for the money I'm going to pay for. And how about thirty-five pounds for a full fair season pass? I just can't agree with mm. at all. That's that's pretty. No, I'm, I'm, I'm with you now. Game. So no, no, sorry. I, I agree. I, I wouldn't pay thirty four ninety nine for that. Um, I, I I personally have bought quite a few um, uh, DLCs. The only only ones that conclude story for the actual game. Um, Dark Souls two. I I got the um, the season pass of that, so I got all the DLC for it because it's story content, and I, I quite like yeah. I quite like story content in my games. Um, I've never bought. In fact, that's a lie. I have bought. I did buy the Titanfall um, season pass. Um, yeah. it, the game was different, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it didn't yeah. feel like a standard COD clone or a Battlefield clone. It gave you something different. So I thought that game did actually deserve my my money towards it. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm with you. I I would never pay thirty four ninety nine for a bunch of multiplayer maps. Not a chance in holy hell. Yeah, as, as said, thirty thirty five pounds is near enough the same price as the game. So you're effectively yeah. paying twice for the game, and you're probably only getting about half the amount of content in the base game to begin with for that price. I exactly. just I just no. Give give us a full game, please, or at least if you are going to do that, make it a hefty expansion pack. Give me the same mm -hmm. amount of content in the base game. But completely new, completely refreshing. Mm. I'd much rather think... I'd pay for expansion packs happily if the content's there, but DLC packs, nope. Do you think that uh, I don't know? Maybe it's me you're thinking. It could be me thinking this at the end of the day. Um, back uh, in the console days of this Nintendo SNES, uh, Nintendo Mega Drive, Master System, um, so on and so forth, they the games were. Uh, cartridge based, and you purchased the game for forty nine ninety nine or thirty nine ninety nine, and the game was literally perfect uh, on launch. There was no bugs. There was absolutely no way for the developer to fix it because they didn't have the internet back then, of course. Yeah. And do you believe? Do you think that there's the competition out there is forcing game 
developers to push out the games faster before with lacking in Q&A and lacking in testing, lacking in content and chucking these games out that are half done. Um, back in the old days uh, when I was growing up, uh, there was, there seemed to be, uh, I, I don't know if it was me, I, I still think there's quite a lot of games back then just for two systems. But the quality of the games were a lot higher. Yeah. There's one or two that are a load of shit, like E.T., the fabled E.T. <laughs> you know, that's a pile of shit. Buried in one. But, you know, oh yeah, but there is, it, it was, it did seem, a, a, games seemed to be a lot more refreshed. There seemed to be quality content in them as well. But now, I don't know what it is. What do you think is causing uh, the turnaround of games nowadays and flush, not being flushed out properly and this reason for DLC, you, there's one reason for DLC which you've already given, which is, um, you know, it's to keep the consumer to the game. I understand that, but couldn't DLC also be a, a, a way to produce their games faster to keep the the gaming audience more happier? Yeah. Well? Um, for like personally, well, there's, there's there's two reasons why this whole kind of rushed uh, release thing kind of exists. The main one is down to the actual publishers. At the end of the day, no matter what the, the developer is, the publisher has the final say. They're the one that are pushing this game out there. They are the ones that set the deadlines, and developers have to work to these deadlines. Mm -hmm. And if the publisher says it has to release on this day, the developer has to release it on that day. The publishers are the ones that have to make these realistic decisions. And a lot of the time, with a lot of game publishers, unfortunately, because... You know, they, they just care about the, the profits and less about the actual uh, gamer to, to, to a degree. They just want to get something released. They'd rather just get something out there and get the money and kind of uh, really squeeze them for their development time, you know, which really, in a lot of cases, you, there are a lot of games you might find that you might play that really could have done with this extra development time, but at the end of the day, the publishers set these deadlines. And I get it, I get it. They're, they're a business, they have to release certain things at certain times and they have to make sure they're making enough uh, profit, but I, I don't see the logic in sacrificing the game's quality and the game's reviews, which ultimately ultimately reflect on, on sales. Um, mm -hmm. I don't see the point in sacrificing things like that just so they can make money faster. I'd much rather, if I was a publisher, to let the developer work on the game for as much time as they need, as long as they're not taking the piss, um, to make sure that the game is nailed, to make sure that it's polished, and make sure that when it is released and people are lapping it up and buying it from all the shops, that they are having the best time with that game that they could possibly have without any game-breaking glitches or whatever. Yeah, but even with that, though, you were saying that, you know, it's the publishers that are pushing for the publishers are paying for the actual game to be produced, which is understandable. You know, you, you can't, you don't have an, a, a money tree growing at the back of your offices yeah. where you just pick off a couple of hundred dollars and go, here, get money, it's a couple of hundred dollars for you. <laughs> There's still, still the fact still remains is uh, quality of games are better back in the olden days. And they, yeah. they still had publishers behind them pushing the games out, like Electronic Arts. You had to, they were still there. Um, Team Seventeen was still there. Uh, I can't think of many more. Or Sega, Nintendo, of course, and they had there, and they were all publishing houses as well. So, and Code still, even though Code for games has improved, 3D has improved. You know we. We've gone from 2D graphics to 3D graphics, and we've had to learn the code. I still believe back in the olden days, they still had to learn the code and understand how the code works in the machines to produce the games anyway. And same goes with Unity and Unreal Engine and many other yeah. game engines out there. So I, I still can't get in my head, is it really the publisher's 100% fault when you look back then to now, what has really changed? Publishers still paid for the game, they still had the ETAs, but the games were still quality, most of them were. Yeah, um, I I think it really stems back to the point I made previously about the, the practice of DLC and the, the game industry now, because it's so mm. big, it is more about, more about the, the, the profits than actually being for the gamer. I honestly so think money, that money, is, money. Yeah, it's, yeah, but obviously, 
back in the day, they really respected people for picking up these machines and these games, and because it was so small, they had to make as much money as possible, and the easiest way of making as much money as possible was releasing the most solid game that they could. Quality. Well, now, yep. because it's so big, people just want to push them straight out, just push them out, make the money wherever they can, and that's it's really it's it's all down to the attitude change as far as I'm concerned with with things like that. Um, it, you know, I think it still kind of exists with companies like Nintendo. With Nintendo's uh, first-party games, you know, you've got you've got your Mario, yeah. you've, got, you've got your Zelda. Um, even examples like Bayonetta 2, which was in development for years, There's, they they make sure because they know that people are buying their console for those game franchises. Yep. They make sure that all those games are polished and make sure that they're not broken um, upon That's release. It. This is where this is where Sony have got it wrong. Yeah, you know, Drive Club is 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 is, is Drive Club developed by Sony as well, or is it developed by uh, third party? Published. Uh, it's developed by one of their first party studios, Evolution Studios, who also oh, okay. made the Motor Storm series on PS3, as well as a couple mm. of other games on PS3. So it's not so 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 it's not in house team. At no, Sony's no, no, no. Sources. Um, but I think it made an interesting point about Drive Club, though, because I say I, I did, as I said before, I did the review for it for Envision, which has recently gone up, and um, to me that struck me as one of those games that wasn't 100%. I'm not saying that it was completely wholly unfinished, but more so in the fact that the, the multiplayer component, if you've ever heard of anything about Drive Club, you've mostly heard about the fact that Drive Club's multiplayer functionality is broken, it's crippled. Um, it, I, on launch, when I first got the review copy through, it was I couldn't connect at all. Uh, as as the weeks kind of went by, it did improve, and I was eventually finally actually able to experience the multiplayer for what it was. When it did work, I thought it was fantastic, just like the rest of the game. I thought you know, I thought it was a fun, solid driving mm. game, but the multiplayer was broken, and I don't see how they couldn't have known about these issues. I'm not I'm not saying that they were completely arrogant and knew that when that and the studio knew that when they were pushing this game out it was gonna do this. But I honestly think that the studio couldn't put all the time they wanted to in the game because at the end of the it's day the the game was meant to come out as a release game for the PS4, don't forget. That was a year ago. That is true. Um Sony had to delay the game by a year. That obviously must have pissed them off. <laughs> Um, obviously, I know Sony respect them because they are one of they they you know they've they're a loyal company that have made great games such as Motor Storm, um, and obviously they did comply to them because again they they want a competitor to a game like Forza, but a year long delay is a long time, and I think by that point Sony just wanted to release and get it out as soon as possible, especially when it gets to the Christmas time rush. Um, when obviously game sales do improve and then when new games come out in this window, you do tend to see a uh, higher increase of buyers. Um, so yeah, I think they really just pushed them out to get it and they knew it wasn't fully finished. Uh, the developers are actually uh, actually being great and they have they have got a season pass out there which offers plenty like new tracks and new cars and stuff like that. But they are actually offering free content as well down the line. Um, you know, there's, there's things like a couple of new cars, as far as I'm aware. Um, also, some new maps as well. Um, I guess that's it, okay to have. It, it's great to have, but I can't help but get the feeling because of how sloppy the multiplayer functionality mm. was that this content was meant to be, to be in the game in the first in place. In the game in the first place, there are elements like weather effects and things. There's this, the, 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 uh, the, they've got like rain and things like that, and maybe ice and things like that. They're not in the base game. They're coming as free content, as far as I'm aware. Holy shit. Uh, just stuff like that, and they have been developing for a while. Again, it gives off this impression that the game wasn't 100% when it was released. These extra things. There's not even replays in the game. I'm not sure if that was a design choice, or they just weren't able to include that in at the time. But in a, in a in a system and in a generation that encourages sharing your gameplay moments yep. with this Twitch integration, YouTube mm -hmm. integration. It seemed mighty odd that elements like replay isn't in the game to begin with. Um, but, you know, fair play to them. At least they're not trying to release this content, which to me, see the stuff that you have missed out because they couldn't get it in with the release time. At least they are releasing it as free and not charging us for it. That's the other nice. Part, they are charging as part of the season pass. I have, I haven't got a problem with extra tracks and cars, you know, tracks that they can make after development time. It doesn't really seem like they've cut a lot of stuff out because 
that are there's, there's about 50 cars, which is for me, I think that I'm fine with that. They all f handled differently, and there are a lot of tracks as well. So, you know, it didn't seem like it felt lacking to begin with. But as I say, this this stuff that is missing and coming free content feels like it should have been in the game at release. So yeah. Sony, take note, put your finger at your ass. <laughs> Job next to be time. honest, though, I, I, I don't blame them from their position. As I say, it was delayed by a year. Uh, apparently, they reworked key elements of the game over that course of year to redesign it and make it better. And at the end of the day, they can't keep delaying it all the time. And the longer they delayed it, they pissed off enough people by announcing its delay at the launch. It was one of the games that a lot of people were excited for. Um, so and I, I, I understand. Off a lot more. Yeah, I mean, I get these obviously the pressure of wanting to deliver the game out as soon as possible to appease those fans and keep the game in the public eye. You know, you you get a, you get a game missing for a year, and it loses its traction. I think we kind of saw that with Watch Dogs a bit as well. There was a hell of a lot of build up, and then when that got delayed, was it by it was by at least four or six months or something, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, but with Watch Dogs, though, it lost a bit of traction. At least for me, I was excited up until launch, then it got delayed, and then. I just kind of felt out of touch with it as it came around. Um, I, so I think they were terrified of just isolating the game completely. I was pissed off more than anything else when it came out. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck's this shit? Did it wash dogs? This is shit. <laughs> <laughs> I know it didn't get as many uh, positive <laughs> critique as it want, as uh, people assumed it would. But, um, no, it, 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 the thing, I, I don't know if it was... Um, of Microsoft or Sony or one of these firms, you probably heard yourself rumours on the internet saying that uh, Microsoft are paying off um, developers to uh, hold back their games until it looks better on this platform or lock the resolution to uh, 900p on all platforms, but not being funny. Okay, you got the PlayStation 4. It, it seems to be more powerful than the Xbox One, and it has produced much better games. But even if it is more powerful, the games that have come out from it are still still not up to par. Yeah, the 1080p, they're 60fps, but they're still not perfect. Um, yeah. Like Lords of the Fallen is not perfect on any of the consoles. There yeah. are screen tears. It's um, uh, Graphics don't look perfect. It's dodgy. Um, you got the evil uh, within. It's again another game that is 1080p and 60 FPS, and it's still not good. I I I don't know. I, I uh, it's hard to say. Is uh, of the next gen machines come out uh, too early? No, I, I think it was a good time for them to come out. Um, do I think they should be more powerful? Uh, yes and no, but I also personally believe that the gamer yeah. feels more entitled these days to expecting to get better. Better, yeah. better, 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 better. If they don't get better, 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 they go out on an uproar and cry over it. Yeah. And this kiss can be seen by Assassin's Creed being locked down to 900p on all platforms and 30 FPS on all systems. And then it comes to PC at 1080p or 4K and 60 FPS. And oh, I want it as well. Boo hoo, boo hoo. I don't give a shit, yeah. Personally, I'm a PC gamer, so they can just fuck off as far as <laughs> I'm concerned. I, I spend a fortune on my PC. I'm happy with it. Everyone else can kiss my ass. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of yeah. one of those, those areas, kind of. People don't really look at it realistically. I, 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 I'm a PC gamer. I'm also a console gamer. I make stream or two for whatever games you know come out for the system. But with the whole kind of FPS thing, I'm I on my PC. I've spent about 1,500 on that. Mm -hmm. I, I would be pissed off if I wasn't able to run a game well at 60 FPS or at a decent frame rate uh, or decent uh, resolution because at the end they've paid all this money. I should be yeah, of course. Bearing in mind it's a well optimized port and not some shitty thing they've taken off console, threw yep. it on with unoptimized settings that just ridiculous like a, game breaking. Dark Souls one on PC. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Fucking that, shit. That is a red <laughs> port. Um you know, I feel like damn right we should be getting these extra settings and spending a lot of money on it. Even though that said in regards to console, um, I I honestly do think the, these well, what is current gen now 
Uh, I do honestly think the new standard should become 60 FPS on console. Yeah, yeah. I feel the, I feel they have got the. I do feel like they have got. They've, they've got the power to run 60 FPS. I just don't think the developers are optimizing as much as they can. But then again, at the end of the day, hardware has been officially out for a year. Obviously, developers have been playing around with it a couple of years as it's been Sorry, iterated yep. and uh, circulating around the studios. But I do honestly think that when developers have had more time with the hardware to develop for it and stuff like that, they really should uh, start turning to 60 FPS as a standard because not only does it make the game look less choppy, yep. but FPS also reflects on reaction time within the game itself. During a game at 60 FPS, your actions respond a lot quicker than it would do at 30 FPS. Yep, I agree. Um, you know, 60 FPS looks better and plays better. And the thing that annoys me the most, you know, I, I don't mind playing a console game at 30 FPS. I don't play, mind playing any game at 30 FPS, but if it can be helped, I'd, I'd have gladly play at 60 FPS. But the thing that annoys me is, particularly with, with Ubisoft and their recent comments, and even with Sony and... Uh, Rebellion, I think it is, they're making the order um, 1886 or... Oh, yeah, yeah, another one. Is when, yeah. They're, when, they're, when they are coming up with their bullshitty excuses, attempting to justify why the game is running at 30 FPS, they can just... They, I don't mind if they come out and say, sorry, we haven't been able to optimize it as much as we wanted to, or we're still learning that hard hardware and we're having trouble so 30 FPS is what we still with. That's fine. I know, I'm fine with stuff like that. They just come out and admit it that way. But it's when they come out with the, the bullshitty excuses and go, oh, yeah, we've chosen stylistically to go with 30 FPS because it looks better for the player in an adventure game and makes it look more cinematic because films also run at 24 FPS. Bullshit. The game does not look better at 30 FPS. It is factual. It is factual that a game plays, looks better, at 60 FPS. Don't try and bullshit me with some ridiculous excuse. It was at the, at the order 1866 is where they said, we've gone with 30 FPS purposefully because we want the game to be as cinematic as possible and since as films work at 24 FPS, 30 FPS makes sense to stick to. Hmm. No, that's not how games work. Films work is. at 24 FPS because they're a film and when and in between film frames, camera frames, that it's blurred, the motion blur, so it looks smoother, and that's just the way cameras work and the way film works. In the context of a game, 30, well, anything lower than 30 FPS is sluggish, and 30 FPS and above is playable. Don't try and justify it saying that it looks better for the player because that is that's bollocks. bullshit. And I, I, just say we couldn't optimize it as well as possible, and I'm fine with that. The question is, is it going to be 1080p though? That's another thing. Resolution gate, 1080p. Are they compromising the FPS just for the 1080p bullshit? Um, I uh, HD HD comes in different. I don't know. HD is not just 1080p. Is it HD is 720p as well? 720p, 900p. I you think know? I think what studios need to do is now that they've got this new generation of consoles, expectations are raised, and so they should be. I think 720p was fine. Last generation, when it was this move to HD consoles, move to HD TVs, where they become less, they became less expensive and more open, and as the as last generation progressed, 1080p then started to kind of come in with games and stuff. Now that it's now it's this newest generation, 1080p should be the standard. 720p, running a game at 720p on a 1080p screen, which most people have, if anyone buys a HDTV, 99% of, of the time, it's going to be 1080p, and you notice the difference yep. between a game with 720p and 1080p, and when a game runs at 1080p, on a 1080p TV screen, monitor, whatever, it's nice and clear, and I honestly think yep. that that should be the standard. Now... In regards to the whole Xbox One and PS4 thing where Xbox One is running most games at 900p settings, um, the difference between 900p and 1080p, it's not that big. It's not. It's it's kind of hard to notice. But I do... Yeah, it, it's not as big of a jump between 720p and 1080p. And you have kind of a big jump give it really good attention to notice the difference. Now, I'm not saying that resolution isn't important. I honestly, I think it's extremely troubling to hear that developers developing for the Xbox One are struggling to get 1080p. I think that's really kind of worrying. Hopefully they'll sort it out. 
Um, it is, it's strange. I'm. I know both the Xbox One and the PlayStation Four are, are basically PCs in a box, being architecture slightly differently to you know access RAM faster and things like you know access this RAM to go here and blah blah blah. Whatever the technical terms is, who gives a rat's ass? The consoles are the PCs in a box, right? And with a PC, with a PC, you have 16 gig of RAM, 8 gig of RAM. You have your dedicated graphics card and you know, that sort of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Why can't personally? Why can't they chuck in VSync? <laughs> yeah. Well, see, <laughs> I know it's it's stupid, things, but it's one of the things I actually thought to myself was like, you know, what if, what if console games started having graphic settings on them? So, you know, because I'm one of those gamers that, you know, I love graphics. If it's a game that has great graphics, fantastic. I will love them. I think they're beautiful. But I always favour performance over graphics. I'd happily toggle down the performance to make sure the game's running as fast as possible. If the game's running over 60 FPS with full graphics, fine, I'm fine with that. But if it, I don't like playing games on PC especially um, because I've got such a you know, powerful rig. I don't like playing them under 60 FPS. I'm much rather a smoother experience. Why, why, yeah, why, why can't they have that in consoles? Why can't they have settings? So then the people that do care about the, the, the dipping frame rate to 30 FPS... If they, they can just toggle down. things and yeah. yes, or even as you say, run it in VSync. Now, v- VSync isn't the most foolproof solution, nope. often because it's waiting on the the graphics side, uh, reaction times and things can be iffy. But I believe that like, consoles can actually do it. I believe consoles can probably put off VSync better than a PC can do because they they work differently. Yeah. Um, there's just I know there are a couple of companies that have added in certain features, like with Infamous Second Son. Natively, I natively that runs at an uh, unlocked FPS, so it can run anything from 30 to elements of 60, I think, or something like that. They did actually they did actually patch in a setting where you could just lock it to 30. Um, you know, with, that's that's another matter altogether, though, really, with with unlocked and locked frame rates. That's um, weird. I don't, I don't know why. It's one of those things. It's it, it's odd with with consoles and stuff more so with unlocked uh, frame rates. That's stupid because, for consoles. Yeah, it, it's it's bizarre. Sometimes it can be fine, but I just don't see the point. I'd much rather probably have it locked because when it's when it's unlocked, it's all over the place throughout gameplay. It's really inconsistent. And as I said, because frame rate has has an an impact on the reaction time and how it deals with your input. Having this unlocked thing like frame rate can be really odd at times, and it gives us really kind of inconsistent experience. Um, and and of course, screen tearing as well as also would be oh in the God. game yeah. if it's unlocked as well. And that's one thing I hate in all my games is screen tear. Screen tear because <laughs> yeah, you're going is, through yeah. it, and thinking, yeah, it okay, that wall's moved. Yeah, <laughs> I, I uh, screen tearing annoys me. I mean, it, if there's just a little bit of it, I can just about live with it. But when there's like, whole heaps of it, I think Far Cry 3 on console. Had a lot of screen tearing, if I remember rightly, and that annoyed me to no end. <laughs> the worst one, the worst one I've ever played so far, Wolfenstein's the new one, New Order. Yeah. I was probably I was as, as I'm the company owner of Envision. Um, I was uh, literally on on the onto the developers every goddamn day of the game, and I was saying, you know, uh, why haven't I got VSync? Blah blah blah. It's doing my absolute head in, <laughs> and. Um, I was like, oh come on, you know, I, I've got this. I got the Nvidia turned on with VSync. I've got, um, I got the settings in the game with VSync, and I'm still going into the poxy game. And what have I got? Stupid freaking screen tearing. <laughs> what is going on? And it's a shame because that game is probably one of the best games I've played this year. Uh, Port Wolfenstein: The New Order was phenomenal and great fun. I just had a ton of fun playing that. Um, but yeah, it, it can be annoying when grand and graphical things kind of get in the way of experience. It's more so with frame rates and stuff. Like, you know, that that is the performance of the game. If you've got a sloppy FPS, the game's going to perform. Yep, I agree. Shot. I agree. Um, totally. I think with, with Assassin's Creed 3, I think it was on console, that frame rate, I swear, was all over the place. I struggled to play it on console just because the frame rate was just like really yeah. sluggish and just looked choppy and the screen tearing. Sad, sad. Uh, which is quite, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that Sans Creed Unity is at least locked to 30 FPS and it should be in, uh, consistent. I, even though I do hope that in the future 60 FPS does become the standard. If the PC version is not locked. Yeah. Right. I have to get the PC, the PC version myself, to be honest. Um, and everyone out there, okay, 
Uh, this is no word like me and Jimmy have uh, played this game. Um, Shadows of Mordor. Um, yeah. It yeah. says you need a shitload of goddamn RAM to play it, and a graphics card is bullshit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <Badly> <laughs> we've, both, we've both had the HD graphics pack chucked in, and I gotta admit, it's shit because there's not much change to it anyway. But it runs. Yes, it runs. It looks good. It's nice. So even if you're a bit worried out there, saying, "Oh, I haven't got the graphics card, I haven't got the RAM to do it," just fucking buy the game because it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you now, it's must be bullshit. I was kind of hoping by this point though that they would have actually properly like patched it and optimized it to run better because that's the six 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 gigabytes dedicated uh, video RAM, wasn't it, on the graphics card? Yeah, I think it only really comes with the really really high end ones. The and it's, it's not it's not the biggest. Jumping graphical fidelity ever. I'm running it fine. It's, it's running it over 30 FPS, which is fine by me, but you know, I'd much rather at least be a bit smoother. And the question is, what card have you got? What uh, graphics card have you got running out? How much VRAMs have got? Yeah, I've got I've got a NVIDIA GTX 770, um, and it's got 4 gigabytes of VRAM on it. Um, and I got, I got two. I got, uh, they're both mobile pro GPUs. Don't, don't, don't disrespect me. Okay? <laughs> I say any shit about mobile GPUs, right? They're catching up. I have um, the GTX 780M, and I have uh, the new NVIDIA 900Cs card as well. Yeah. Both of them. Even the um, 700 card from uh, the mobile GPU runs the game, and I play at 1920 by 1080 every single game I've got. I run at that. Yeah. I chuck on VSync all the time because I don't like screen tearing. Yeah. I tell you now, the 765 card has only got like a 2 gig of virtual RAM, and I got HD settings running. Yeah. How's that possible? <laughs> I'm still playing a poxy game, but I need 6 liars. Yeah. It, it's just, it, it's one of those cases of bad optimization as far as I'm concerned. It, 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 there should be no way that it should ask for 6 gigabytes of uh, VRAM because that's. Yeah, so, so that comes on these super high end cards that are super expensive. Yeah. So I tell you right now, guys, when Assassin's Creed Unity comes out now, this, this week on a Friday, on the 14th of November, get, get the book out now, guys. 14th of November, Assassin's Creed Unity comes out from Ubisoft. It says it requires a shitload of RAM again. An absolute ball to the knees graphics card. Yeah, yes. 780. 780 is what for. Um, a 680. 680 for minimum, and 770 for... That's 680, yeah. Required. So, fuck that shit, right? Yeah, it, I, get, I, I see that as another optimization board yeah. that as far as I'm concerned. I reckon they run those cards themselves in the office. They've all got t you know, titans and things. Oh, I've got titans. <laughs> Better game for titan. We'll put, it on, uh, we'll put it on requirements. Minimum specs, titan. Yeah. That's what they've done. Well, just, let's go back a few years and let's, go, let's get the uh, NVIDIA 520 out. <laughs> GT. <laughs> let's see if it run that. No. All they've done is says, we've got Titans, we'll just put that down as a minimum requirement. <laughs> it, it, it's one of those things, though. You made a good point, though, like optimization like, between games and stuff. Like, thankfully, I think optimize, like, optimizations for games developed for console that have been ported to PC, I think they have improved at least this generation. Of, as you said uh, before, with the new generation consoles running off like, a more PC style architecture. Mm. It is much easier for companies to now take the game on a PC if that's the way they can do it. Uh, so I do think we are going to see better optimization. But even so, with the, I still find the Assassin's Creed Unity one pretty ridiculous because the graphics card is, is, is pretty expensive and it's pretty recent to ask as the required. Two years old. And, and that's, for, that's only for required. And it's just like, yeah. well, you know. Mine should be able to run it, hopefully. I've got all the extra stuff as well. So. It'll run. No, no, I, reckon it, I reckon definitely running your card. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it, definitely yeah, not. Yeah. Just, just go in and buy the game. and, and uh, Even if you turn the settings down a little bit, it's going to run. Because yeah. I, I don't know I, I don't know if you, you... I don't know if people are with me in this, or if you do exactly the same thing. I always turn off anti-aliasing, what it's called. They want to take off the jacket editor. Yeah. I, take, I turn it off all the time. Because at 1080p... There. It's so crisp anyway. The chances of seeing those lines are very slim anyway. I don't know if it's you as well. If you, if you, if you see that thing as well, I, I don't see it in 1080p games. Um, to be honest, I I tend to notice a lot of uh, jaggies and stuff in games, uh, like jagged edges that kind of look a bit 
horrific um, at times. Hmm. Uh, I do tend to have anti anti aliasing on when I play games, but mm -hmm. there's so many various settings all require so much kind of pro uh, processing power. You know, I do tend to diet down because you know I I'd rather have a better performing game than a better looking one all the time. I've, I've always turned it off. I it it can be my screen size because I'm playing on a 17-inch notebook, gaming yeah. notebook. Uh, maybe it's the screen size that compresses everything a lot more, so the the pixels on the screen are a lot smaller. Maybe that's the reason why I yeah, I, think, I don't. Yeah, see it. I think it's cause, yeah, because I'm I'm running I think like a 20. Four inch screen, so it's quite a big bit. I think, yeah, if you, if you are playing it on a small screen, you tend to notice it a bit less, obviously, you know, more the, compact the screen. Mm. Um, yeah, that, that's always one. It tends to swallow a lot of processing power, so I tend to tame it. I have to say, tame it, really. Uh, we've learned something there. No, no. The bigger the screen, just use a teeny wee little bit of hand <laughs> I think. And then you're not going to see any jagged edges, and at least you probably have better performance. <laughs> uh, yeah. When it comes to resolution, is it really needed over FPS? Mm, I uh, uh, personally no. I think if, if, if the developers are struggling, they hit the 1080p, chuck it down to the next decent level where they have consistent quality, and then chuck on the 60 FPS. Okay, people are not going to be happy with it, but at least then they got a game that is playable. Yeah, I to, to round off my opinion, I of the I. I I think res resolution and FPS does matter within games, but I'd much rather have a better performing game than one that looks a bit better. So yeah, if you know, I honestly think the standard should be 60 FPS uh, at least at some point during this generation, hopefully mm -hmm. in the next year or two. But you know, if if they are having performance issues, please take down. Guys, don't you know? Just take down the resolution. Bit. I'd much rather have a performing game, and I think everyone else is more thankful for it. And maybe even chuck in some PC options, because at the end of the day, they probably have the capability to do that anyway. Why not? Yeah, I'd, as I said, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't have a problem with having stuff like that in there. I, you know, why, why don't they throw a couple of graphics sliders in there to change the the performance of a game if people care about it so much? Yeah, I think it'd be a good idea. Go. If you want 1080p, is your option. If you want 60fps, is your option. Enjoy. <laughs> this isn't playing t enough tough shit. <laughs> we we've given you the option. Yeah. I don't know. Why not? That's a good idea. Um, shall we have one more discussion before we go off tonight? Yeah, yeah. Or you wanna disappear? No, no. One more. One more. Fun, one, more one more. One more. Okay. Shall we? Uh, we've got a uh, circuit development DLC video games. Well, let's just discuss the final one, shall we? Um, violence. Ooh. Yeah. Hot topic. On anyone's lips, but the news. The news always blames games for violence. Yep. Yes, any shooting, it's games. He was playing Call of Duty. Yes. No. <laughs> I tell you one thing, guys. This is no other lie. If they're playing Call of Duty and they're going around shooting people, the chance of them hitting someone is quite slim. <laughs> well, I tell you that now. <laughs> they, haven't got they haven't got snap to aim, have they? So they can't. Uh, <laughs> they can't get those yeah. on the edge. They can't be doing any 360 exactly. no scopes in real life. <laughs> so don't worry about that, guys. If they're playing Call of Duty, you can't play in a video game. Okay? <laughs> but if they're playing Battlefield, though, it's a completely different matter. They maybe have a slight chance of being caught by video games. But overall, violence. Now, hot topic. I shouldn't be discussing this because we get a lot of hate about this game. And, of course... Hate being the name of the game called Hatred. Yep. Uh, in developers are making it. They're not being. They're not hiding away from the fact that this game is violent. They are pushing the boundaries of perception of our perception of violence. Call of Duty, Battlefield, Grand Theft Auto, um, Manhunt, all can be classed as violent games because you're still shooting someone, you're still killing someone. Shadows of Mordor, you're chopping off orcs' heads and and loads of things. But mostly it's going to be bad guys or enemies or thugs. You know, it tends to go over your head, you know, yeah. to your overhead. We don't really think about think about it being a bad thing. Now with hatred, though. This is a guy who is mentally fucking insane in his head, probably taking way too many drugs, hires a kite, and thinks everyone's a coke can after him. Yeah. Too many mushrooms probably, huh? Catch <laughs> mushrooms. And he's going around going around shooting people in the head and the girls are screaming, 
don't shoot me, don't shoot me. And he's blown their brains out all over the place. And he's going to shops and literally killing everyone. And it's very, very um, intense in the way they've done it. And um, uh, will this game push us to the edge of where we should perceive violence? Mm, I, I personally think I, I wouldn't be getting a game. I think it is way too um, too in your face, and I don't like the idea yeah. of it. But it's also got me to look at other games as well, saying why if this guy you're playing a guy who is mentally insane, he's going around killing people. That's what they do. Yeah, you got Hanwell Lecter who went around and ate eight people, and we watch it on TV. Um, we don't really mind that, do we? Um, and then we got Call of Duty and um, like Shadows, Shadows of Mordor, and we're going around chopping off orcs heads. We don't care about that neither. Yeah. So, what makes us think our oh, judges can anything differently? What, what, what do you think? It's when I well when I first watched the trailer when it was when it was first released and then suddenly social media exploded. It escaped from it if you were part of the gaming world. I I threw up the trailer, started watching that, and I won't be playing the game for the simple reason that it just looks lame. It looks like such a lame game. It's one of those kind of games where it just seems so so old fashioned. And if it if maybe if it had released around the same time as games like uh, Manhunt, Manhunt Two, Postal Two. The Punisher, mm. all those games that were really controversial mm. at their own time, maybe it, yeah, it wouldn't have bited, people wouldn't have bited too much attention to it really. But yeah, it's just the minute it coming out in the age in like 2014, and then just it just it just came out ah, of nowhere, yes. and it just looks it just looks lame. And games like that are old fashioned. As I said, Manhunt and things was something of their time. It was almost kind of a phase that the games industry kind of went through. With this whole violence affair, and it's kind of over and done with. You know, not really had any massive controversies happening in regards to violence, and then this just kind of came out of nowhere, mm. and it just comes across as senseless. Now, I'm not one of those kind of people who who believes that playing violent games makes you a violent person, and makes you commit all these crimes, and make you mm-hmm. copy mm-hmm. things you're doing on the screen, because that is also bullshit. And all the reports that all seem to come through yep. all prove that we're doing that. Wrong. It's just all seems to be politicians and and. Uh, Really, uh, straight edge mums that just seem to just, uh, you know, have have a problem with these and just think that anything that isn't uh, totally correct is, you know, just. Yeah, a... but the parents fought with that though, all right? The games yeah. were 18 for a reason, you stupid parent. Yeah, Don't see, buy that... it for your 12 year old kid. That was always <laughs> one of those things. Whenever all like reports were going like, oh, this uh, this child or this teenager had killed someone or assaulted someone because they played it in a game. It was always like, well, that game's 18, 18 rated. You shouldn't be getting your kid to that game. It is restricted. Mm-hmm. And if they do anything or do become somewhat influenced by it in some way or repeat some of the language in the game, that's no one else's fault but your own because you allowed it. Yep. You allowed them to play that restricted content that was never mm-hmm. ever intended for that audience. It's just uh, it annoys the hell out of me. Um, it's just like I, I was um, I was working in game when I was younger. And uh, Grand Theft Auto, um, of course, was always a big Christmas hit. Yep. And it was our job to make sure that the parents who are buying it know that it's an 18 rated game. So we go say, no, it's an 18 rated game. If you're buying it for your son or daughter, you know, you must understand that there is sexual violence in it, um, and loads of other stuff you wouldn't really want your kid to see. And they're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I wouldn't yeah. buy my kid uh, um, if. I, I, I've done it myself. I, I, I've actually gone out and bought the latest Grand Theft Auto for my for my son. He's young. Yeah. I, 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 the mother uh, did, didn't really like the idea of me buying it, and I'm with her 100% on it. And I think to myself, if he's not going to play it at my house, then he's going to play it at his mate's house yeah. anyway. Yeah. And at least if he's playing it at my house, I can see all oh, what, what's going on. Yeah, as per se, but then of course you got in in back in mind. 
I shouldn't be buying it anyway because if he's influenced by it, it's my blinking fault. Yeah. I bought it for him. It's a hard choice to make as a parent. Yeah, because, yeah. Um, thing is, though, when I was growing up, my parents didn't really mind me playing 18, 18 rated games or watching 18 rated films or anything like that. It was uh, one of those things that just never really bothered them too much. Obviously, I wasn't mm -hmm. watching, obviously, I wasn't doing all this from a really, really young age. But, you know, I, I was playing games like Grand Theft Auto when they were the big news, and I, I remember buying Command Hunt when that was vaguely new, think about a year after release and some or whatever. I don't know, when I was a kid, I watched all these violent, gory films. I remember buying Blade 1, for example, on video, probably when I was about 10 or 12 years old. Really? But, um, you know, I, it never influenced me. I, I've, 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 I've never been negatively influenced by any of the content I've watched when I was a young when I was uh, young growing up watching this being surrounded by it. So I really don't see too much of an issue. I do think that when there are these issues um, of certain people carrying out these acts that they've seen in games or really being heavily, heavily influenced by them, they are people that um, that do have these kind of uh, mental issues, more so with the ones that are uh, They're popping the mushrooms, okay? Just admit it. Right? Yeah, just, they just, go in the field popping the mushrooms. Yeah, it, it's it's the ones that do go out and do commit murders when, when there's several ones like, oh, GTA, I did, did I committed this murder because of GTA, I committed this murder because of Manhunt. It wasn't mm. because of the game. They they were obviously of a fragile mind, yep. and this game just kind of affected them because of their their illness or whatever had mm -hmm. happened to them. Yeah, you know, to to, to then to, to just hear about a case like that and then to unfairly blame the game on it is is not is not right at all. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and bringing bring it back to obviously the, the context of hatred, um, to the game that I assume is probably come out next year or so. It's mm -hmm. when when watching the trailer, it is just mindless violence, as you said. It it, it starts off with the trailer and it's the, the main character, uh. Announcing that he just hates the world for whatever reason, yeah. just going to kill Psycho. everyone. That there's there's no justification there. There's no, nothing to the characters. That, you know, with, with games like Grand Theft Auto, yes, you are playing as criminals, and yes, you might be killing police officers, or and you are you are playing a criminal, and you're obviously doing all these illegal acts or whatever. But it's justified in a sense from the character's point of view. And when you go out into the open world and committing all these, or obviously all this violence and getting all these police after you, that happens because you've initiated it. That's not yep. something that's purposely, it's, it's not something that is incorporated directly into the storyline. That's something you choose to do as the player. You know, if there's, there's not like, um, there's not like a mission where you just start off as a you know, like character. Um, of one of the characters, like say Michael, for example, you don't have a mission, go out and kill 100 civilians. That's not a mission. <laughs> That's something you can do, but it's not built in as part of the narrative. Um, oh, I know a bit loads so, of people out there do that. Yeah, and it's it's kind of one of those things. It's, and with the the criminal acts that the players take part in, it is justified in a way. Not, not, not I'm saying that uh, I condone it, but it's at least justified in a sense because it takes in mm -hmm. aspects of the story of why they're doing it. This mm -hmm. is literally about a psychopath who wants to kill people. That That is all it is, and that's all you seem to do, just go around and just mindlessly kill, kill. people. Simple and it's that. just... I yeah. just, I just, It just seems like a pointless game. It's needless. It doesn't need to exist. It, nope. it's, it just seems like one of those games that has been created for the purpose of gaining attention. And like you know, for all we know, the gameplay might have a little bit more to it. But in as far as it looks like in the trailer, a it's mindless like just, killings. Yeah, just go around mindlessly killing everyone. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, it's, it's, I just don't see why, like, who the game appeals to, and why they feel the need for it to exist. Because to be honest, from a gameplay standpoint, it looks just pretty shallow. You just literally yeah. play someone go around shooting people. I just it, it's not no. justified in any way. It's just no. mindless for the sake. It's it's violent for the sake of being violent, and I just don't see why it needs to exist. The, the biggest question is going to be how are we game? How are we gamers going to perceive the game when it comes out? Of course, when fan gets released, and how are we view artists, the journalists out there, going to perceive the game when it comes out? Yeah, we not. Uh, I don't know. 
how the hell can you look at this game and give it a good score if we personally feel that it's wrong? Yeah. I, that's very, very hard. Uh, you know, we've already seen um, rev uh, reviews of games where the artists think that it, there's, there's too much tit in it or there's too much ass in it. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's right. Uh, uh, and I don't look at the other things of the actual game. Uh, how the hell are we going to look at that and say, this game, ooh, I don't like it so so much. I don't like this game at all. How the hell are you going to score that? Yeah. Oh. It's one of those things you just kind of got to... Whoever is unfortunate enough to uh, <laughs> have to review it, I just kind of obviously got to be in the mind, mind frame to be like, right, okay, let's just ignore all the bad price. Let's just oh, yeah. for what it is. I'm not expecting it to be a good game. Just looking from the trailer, as I say, it looks pretty shallow gameplay-wise, but I think any reviewer that is approaching this just needs to kind of open, like approach open it with mind. an open mind. You've got, games like, well, you've got games like Manhunt, which leading up to release was extremely controversial. I, mean, I, I, was, I was growing up at, this, at, at the time and hearing all the news stories and play it for myself and seeing it all. The, the news and every single news channel was had uproar about the game. There was at least a couple of stories about it uh, throughout, you know, around release time. Um, but when you, when you remove yourself from all this controversy and just kind of experience the game for what it was without being influenced by any of that, the game was great. It was, it was genuinely a fantastic game. It was incredibly scary. Yeah, there was all the violence, but that was part of the shock value of it. The whole thing was that it was, okay. it, it was, it was meant to be discussing. It was meant to be discussing for the main character as well. You know, mm -hmm. he's he's doing this because it's either do this or die. Die. Mm -hmm. It was it was it was meant to be expressing this whole idea of just how sick this is and being forced to do it. Plus, it was also you know, a horror game that did a damn good job of being terrifying. I remember playing. It. I was terrified. It was so scary. It was a stealth game. I uh, played Manhunt Two. Again, got loads of controversy. It wasn't even released in a lot of territories. You know, it took ages to be released in the UK and Europe, and most of the, and most releases were uncensored. Well, were censored. So you had Dumb, to down, I played that really? game, and again, it was another fantastic game by Rockstar that pushed the boundary, but within good reason. As I say, it was scary. It was mm. another one of these. It was. It was. It was really a uh, psychological kind of horror story. The second one and. Uh, yeah, it, it was oh. a great game if you removed yourself from the, the negative standpoint of, oh, it's incredibly violent, oh, it's incredibly gory, no one should play this, it's a disgrace kind of thing. You remove yourself from that and you can enjoy it. Um, I, think there's, I think there's one other game we all probably know, there's in the media as well, South Park. What did you think of that? They, uh, the, they, they, did, not, they did not edit the, uh, the PC version at all, regardless yeah. of what country it was in console versions, they took out the anal probing. I thought that yeah, was the, the most probing, funniest part of the whole film. What was I, Bond I, doing there? I, I was in tears laughing at that. Obviously, I had, I had the PC release, and I was laughing I was laughing my ass off at that bit. It was just... It, <laughs> it was meant to be disgusting. It was just meant to be totally ridiculous. And the fact that it was Randy that, that it was being done to, it was just disgusting. <laughs> you know... The thing that baffled me the most is not only why they actually removed it, but also because there's worse things that happen in the actual show that aren't yeah. set, but the minute it was in the context of a game, for some reason it had this restriction placed on yeah. it. There's, South Park is meant to be one of those kind of ones that always pushes the boundary. and That was and, so weird. Uh, with things like that. And there's worse things that happen in episodes that didn't get controversy, for example, but the minute it was in the context of a game, Suddenly, it made that made all the difference, and things had to be removed. Um, at least, it, at least things. At least they made a joke out of it in the uh, versions that were censored. That's I think, good, they, but, uh, I think they just had like a, a funny image, and then just had a vague description of what was meant to be happening on the screen, and then referenced the fact that it was being censored. So at least <laughs> kind of turned it on its head. But you know, I think it is a stab at the government of that. Yeah, it's, it's, it it makes really, a good point though with the cell park issue in that. Um, it seems like something that would kind of be normal and no one would bat an eyelid in TV and film, the minute it's put inside an interactive medium, it's just it changes meaning completely in a lot of people's eyes. You look at very kind of gory films and uh, Saw, for example, that had a lot of killing and maybe murdering in it. Yeah, things like, like murder and kind of 
and rape and lots of gore and all this kind of stuff, which in the content of film and TV, in TV is still kind of shocking, but it mm-hmm. doesn't cause it's a loud. much uproar. And it's kind of, people, yeah, it, it's allowed. But in the minute it's put in interactive meetings, suddenly people think, oh, because they're playing it, they're going to act it. They're going to act it out. And because, you know, they're interacting mm-hmm. with the game, it's damaging them in some way mentally. And it's like, it's, it's, it's just ridiculous. It just gets, it's, it's got out of hand, it really has. Yeah. It was it, it got out of hand years ago um, in filming. Um, came in with the very very first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles films where they were men in um, men in um, costumes. Yeah, the latex ones. skin costumes. Yeah, stuff. the latex skins. Yeah, well, the first ones you probably know they were using the uh, all the weapons and anything else. But the second one they didn't use shit. <laughs> really? <laughs> and the reason why they didn't use shit was because the parents complained about the first one, <laughs> so they dumbed it down. <laughs> Uh, no, it's, just it's to, just to beat the parents. Yeah, it's just the minute people complain, like about um, two people complain or something, and then immediately it means it's like the most offensive thing in the world. It's just, you know, <laughs> people just need to be realistic. I think in this generation of kind of kids growing up with all this kind of violent video games and stuff, and all this kind of more violent films that have come along. Over time, mm-hmm. over, over the modern era, I think people are going to have a lot more kind of uh, acceptance of all this kind of stuff in this on the generation that I'm part of. So when I'm older, I think we'll be a lot more accepting of this kind of violent thing because a lot, and, and yep. I don't know a single person uh, that didn't grow up with violent media, like where it's like their violent and gory films. films and games and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I just think it, I think the whole thing is taken out of proportion. I th- I, I'd still, you know, I'd still put a limit on my child if I was going to have a child, and uh, I'd still put a limit on on the the content that they uh, games view and interact with mm-hmm. at a younger age. But you know, I I grew up with it, and it's not affected me. I'm still a, I'm a normal, sane human being. I'm I'm not going to go out and murder someone just because I've played every single GTA when growing up. Debatable, debatable. <laughs> <laughs> we gamers aren't perceived to be insane people. We are insane because we sit in our asses all day and stare at a screen. Oh, no, that's de- debatable, isn't it, really? <laughs> you just have these people in like higher up positions, like politicians and and things that they have a problem with. It so automatically everyone has a problem with it. It's like. Yep. Let the gamers speak for themselves. If they had a problem with it, they they they'd voice their opinion. You know, it's just, mm-hmm. and it's probably never going to end. There's there's always there's always going to be restrictions on things. Um, as I say, I, you know, something that was say that something like The Exorcist. So that was done in the 70s, was it? 70s or 80s? Yeah, that took years and to come out. That took years to come out. There was a hell of a lot of controversy over that scene, and it was obviously everyone was saying disgusting. People were fainting in the cinemas. But then you look at it now, and it's just quite hilarious, really, to think that that was once one of the most controversial things yes. in the film, or things that anyone had ever seen in their life. And as time goes on, what was once the extreme is no longer the extreme. It's now. Yeah, I think with, with that one, I think it's more or less to do with religion, isn't it? Because uh, yeah, well, know, yeah, there was that. I think, I think religion back then was more, uh, you know, more the norm. People, there'd be a lot more people in churches and more people believing in Christianity and, the, and all that sort of stuff. But nowadays, there is, um, it's become less and less uh, the norm nowadays. You know, a lot more people are more agnostic and looking at other sort of ways of looking at, of, at, at religion now. So. Yeah, yeah. When you check something like this sort of uh, this, this sort of thing to um, to an audience, it's just like yeah, whatever. I laugh at it. It's funny, you know. Who, who cares? But yeah. I, I still believe that there are people out there who are uh, you know high religious that do still take offence to what the what the Exorcist has actually done. Yeah. But of course, it's so small now. And they don't really have much of a of, of a shout anymore. Yeah, it's just kind of one thing. It's become it's just become very insignificant in comparison to what you see these days. And yeah, you know, as as time goes on, the extremes are pushed. Becomes nothing. Mm-hmm. Opinions and and stuff like that all obviously change. Yeah. So it's one of those things. Restrictions on content and opinions mm-hmm. on violent media and stuff is always going to be an issue that rages on. And as time goes on and things become more extreme, it can only get worse unless everyone just turns around and. I don't know. <laughs> two decades time, yeah. just like we're just freaks. Screw this. Yeah, there's like screw this. It's fine. What are you on about? I'd like that to happen. I'd like kind of people just to stop and think realistically. Like, 
this hasn't done anything to the past two generations of people growing up. Yeah. Why should we keep trying to fight this battle that only they seem to think exists? Um, again, I still, I, know, I still think it should be restricted to people of a younger age, but to say that all this violent stuff is affecting anyone of any age, even the people that are meant to be playing it, is just totally out of proportion. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. And on that note, we're going to call it a day. Simple fact is, violence in video games does not affect your children, unless they're fucking mentally retarded. Okay? Taking mushrooms, smoking a goddamn weed, or totally insane. One of those ones. And if any of those cases are your children, then please go see a psychiatrist ASAP, because your child's a mental case. I ain't need to help. Oh, it's your fault. It's all the same stuff. You know, if the if the R journey being influenced by this is a mental uh, illness yes. or sort in a weak state of mind that is influencing mm -hmm. them, it's not the that's games, and that's what that's the point we need to hammer on. If anything like that happens, it's not the games, it's the people, yep. and that's where the issue lies. 